Hey guys, a little over a year ago, I put out a video titled, The Only USB Toolkit You'll Ever Need. It was met with overwhelming positive response and feedback, and really helped solidify the foundation for my subscriber base here on YouTube. So thank you all very much for that. In that video, I talk about the Easy to Boot multi boot software. And when I discovered Easy to Boot, I was very excited about what it could do and was eager to make a video about it. And admittedly, in my rush to get that video out, I had overlooked a very important feature, and that is UEFI support. I had promised to do a follow-up video on how to add UEFI support, but as work, family, and life in general gets in the way of these things, I had never made time for that. So this week I sat down to finally start making a video about that, and was pleasantly surprised to find that the latest release of Easy to Boot makes the addition of UEFI support even easier than it had been in the past. So if you're a current user of an older version of Easy to Boot and you haven't yet added UEFI support to your USB toolkit, or you're someone who is completely new to Easy to Boot, this really is the only USB toolkit you'll ever need. And this time, I mean it. Until a better update comes out, I guess. But I've yammered about this enough. Just like Jeff Foxworthy says, let's get her done. So if you already have an older easy to boot stick already created without UEFI support, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to back up the ISOs that you have on your stick. And if you made a tools and storage folder, like I suggested in my first video, back those up as well. Now we need to head to easytoboot.com. There will be a link in the description. From there, we're going to click on downloads and download the first link in the list. After that's finished downloading, we're gonna run that executable, and now we can use this easy to boot interface to create our easy to boot USB. On a side note, the developer of this software has his own YouTube channel named Steve6375, where he goes through a very long and extensive tutorial on how everything in easy to boot works. What I'll be doing here is the quick and easy installation, but if you want more of a deep dive, check out Steve's video. I'll link that in a card as well as leave a link in the description of this video. Also, if you have any questions or concerns about the software, Steve has been invaluable in answering people's questions about easy to boot so he's going to be your best source of info for this software. But back to the quick and easy installation, we're going to select our language and then select the USB stick that we want to overwrite with easy to boot from the drop down menu. Be careful not to accidentally overwrite the wrong USB stick. You will get plenty of warnings about that throughout the process. Then choose this big red button. This will make an easy to boot drive with the default settings. And as I mentioned before, if you want a more in-depth, granular installation process, be sure to check out Steve's video where he will go over the manual installation. But for the purpose of this video, we're going to ignore that button completely. And when you're ready to proceed, click the red arrow, then click on OK to confirm. You'll see this blue window pop up, and you'll be given one final warning that your USB stick will be overwritten. Click on OK to proceed, and when the window turns green, the installation process has finished. Now we can open that USB stick in File Explorer and make the magic happen. I'm just copying my ISO backups to their respective directories in the ISO folder. Linux distros go in the Linux folder, and Windows ISOs have a Windows directory. After you're done placing ISO files in their respective directories, go to the root of the easy to boot drive and run the command file, make this drive contiguous. Now this is optional, but to finish up, I'm copying back my tools folder to the root of the USB drive and making a storage folder to put any other files inside that I wanna carry around in my pocket. The tools and storage folders that I created really have nothing to do with easy to boot. I just think they're good ideas. As far as what tools and ISOs work for you, that's really for you to decide. Think of easy to boot as a toolbox, and it's up to you what you put inside to make your jobs easier. Here's a screenshot of my tools folder, and I've downloaded most of them from portableapps.com. As far as ISOs go, on my easy to boot drive, I have the Windows 10, 64, and 32-bit installers. And in my Linux directory, I carry Manjaro, Zorin OS Lite, Lubuntu, 
Gparted, and Clonezilla. Even if you're not a Linux guru, I mean, I'm certainly not a Linux expert, but I still think it's a good idea to carry around at least one full Linux OS on a USB stick for things like file recovery, troubleshooting, and diagnostics. And a great catch-all Linux distro is Linux Mint if you're not sure what to use. I recommend Mint because it generally has a lot of great driver support and a lot of other things that you would need in an OS right out of the gate. Now if you want to test the easy to boot drive and make sure it should work, with the USB stick selected in the drop down, you can click on this green test with QEMU button. That should launch easy to boot in an emulated environment, albeit in legacy BIOS mode. And if you see this, you'll know that everything should be working properly. Now let's look at easy to boot in real world practice. In this video, I'm going to boot from a UEFI machine to show easy to boots UEFI functionality. If you want to see the legacy BIOS usage, that's covered in my original video, but it's pretty straightforward. Plugging in the easy to boot USB stick, first I'm entering my PC's UEFI settings by tapping the F2 key at startup. But this key may be different on your machine. Now that I'm in the boot settings, I'm going to set the bootable order to make sure USB is the priority. And here we see that the machine has booted from our USB stick with easy to boots UEFI mode looking completely different than its legacy mode. We can browse the directory structure and select the ISO that we want to boot from. Here I'm going to boot from Manjaro Live as if I were going to use it for something like a file retrieval on say a non-booting Windows machine. And here I've booted into Manjaro. And though I have the option to run the installer, I'm not going to do that in this instance. Rather, I'm going to use this to browse the directories of all of the hard drives of this PC. And I have the option to copy files from one drive to another. And we see that even if you don't necessarily want to install a Linux OS, it's an extremely valuable tool to carry around with you. And once I'm done here, I'll just pull the easy to boot USB stick out of that computer and reboot. And as we can see, it's booted this PC back to its original Windows hard drive. To wrap up, I'd like to address a few other things that were talked about in the comments of my other video on easy to boot. The first thing is the alternatives of Ventoy and Yumi. I've been meaning to check out both of those, and I honestly haven't dismissed anyone on their recommendations of looking them over. I just haven't had time to do that yet, but it's coming down the pipe eventually. I promise. On a side note, as I looked at the files on the secondary partition on this new easy to boot USB stick, I saw this one file in particular, and it would appear that easy to boot uses Ventoy in at least some capacity to boot into UEFI mode. Another suggestion that people made was to just get the IODD bootable hard drive. And though I believe there's a lot of value in having an IODD drive in your arsenal for IT work in general, the value of creating a multi-boot USB stick is that you're able to carry around an IT toolkit in your pocket on your keychain. But you can carry around a full hard drive in your pocket if you want. The other thing that was brought up was that some virus scanners return false positives on the easy to boot executable. Now Steve, the developer of easy to boot, addressed all of the comments in regards to this. Personally, I've used my easy to boot drive for over a year now, and I created a few others with no ill effects to my system or the dozens of PCs on which I've used easy to boot. My original video has gotten close to half a million views at this point, and no one has reported any sort of viruses or malware associated with easy to boot. That's in addition to the hundreds of thousands of downloads that Steve has claimed to have gotten with this software on his website. Personally, I'm kinda done with this topic, but it comes down to one simple solution. If you don't trust a piece of software, don't use it. So I think that's been a pretty extensive look at what you can do with easy to boot As I mentioned, if you want a deeper dive, be sure to check out Steve's video on the advanced installation process. There's a link to that in the video description below. I'm going to wrap this video up with a shout out to my patrons. If you would like to support this channel on Patreon and now Ko-Fi, there will be links in the description below. As always, donations are appreciated, but never expected. Remember, the best way you can support this channel is to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, that's it for now, and I'll see you next time with more money-saving tech ideas.